Sometimes you want to make a soap that looks really spectacular. So today I'm going to show you, using Melt and Pour Soap Base, how to make a large amethyst crystal. I'm not going to use a mould, so most of the Melt and Pours that we've done we've poured into a fancy crystal mould. We're going to make it and we're going to rough cut it and we're going to make it into a large pan and we're going to chop it up. I've come in without one of my silicon loaf pans, so I've looked around and thought, what can I use to make it in? I found a Chinese takeaway food container, so that's what I'm going to use to make my loaf, and then I'm going to cut it into the amethyst chunks, but for a job this big, I might need an assistant. So I happen to have one on hand, and you might know Emma. She taught you how to make some soaps about four years ago. So by the wonders of modern technology, She's suddenly aged four years if you've just recently watched her video. So Em, we're going to make an amethyst crystal mold. Okay, have you had a look at an amethyst? Do you know what they look like? You know how they're sort of white on the outside and then there's clear crystals, then a little bit of purple and then a darker purple and a darker purple and then big pointy crystals. Okay, so that's what we want to make it look like. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to make the crystals that go in the base underneath the purple. Okay, take the cutter. I want you to chop some of these up. Now the size that we're going to need to make them in is sort of about, about that big, about two centimetres. Now the only thing that we can do wrong in um, making soaps that look like gemstones is to make them look really smooth and straight and neat because nature doesn't grow things smooth and neat usually. Yeah, unless you go into the Fibonacci series. But with rocks, usually they're a bit rough. There's your cutter, so I want you to just chop all those into, can you just slide there, there you go, chop them into pieces. Now it's quite okay for her to be cutting that up using the soap cutter, yeah they're great, maybe a bit narrower, chop it in half again, because she can't cut herself with the soap cutter. This particular cutter that she's using has come out of the loaf cutter, so you put the entire loaf in and put your blade in here, adjust the end and you can slice them in even slices. So while it's going to cut the soap, it's not going to cut her little fingers. See if you can get some pointy ones and some crystal shaped ones and go chop, 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 quick as you can. Yeah, that's great. It's like a house. Yep, that's okay. Chop them all up. So she's going to chop those up. Let me let me get you a couple more, a bit quicker. Look at oh, that. That's cool. Even quicker, yeah? So now you make a few more because we're going to need enough to fill all in here. Okay, and I'm going to have a chat about what we're doing while you're cutting those up. So if you've been doing some soap making with me in the past, thank you for your help. If you've been doing some soap making with me in the past, you know that often I'll use the little silicon cups to melt the soap in. But this time we're making a whole loaf, so it's going to be a kilo of it. So I, I haven't really, that's not going to do very much for me, I need a bigger one. So I've actually just used some uh, Chinese takeaway food containers and I've already melted down a little bit of the white soap. And, oh, you right? Yeah. Okay. Just slip the board. That's okay. You're all good. And a little bit of the clear soap. Now, when you're making a soap, even if it is different colours that might represent different smells or fragrances, I like to keep the soaps fairly uniform. So I like to use them all the same fragrance. So I had to have a think about this. I'm a bit boring. When, when a soap is purple, I tend to fragrance it with lavender essential oil. So although we're going to have white and silver and clear and purple, I'm going to make them all amethyst fragrance. So with the melted soap, while Em's getting us a whole pile of crystals, they look good, keep going. We're going to take some of the Renaissance Relaxation essential oil and I'm going to use a lot of it because it's going to scent up nearly a kilo of soap. Now, I'm not going to use all of that today, but I need to get a really nice scent through it anyway. And then I'm going to use some purple layers, and they're also going to be scented with the lavender. Now, you want to mix it through pretty well, because otherwise you'll get pockets of your essential oil or your fragrant oil where it's not dissolved. Great. Here you go. There's another one. <laughs> need a whole lot of them, okay? Because this is probably going to make about... Well, if we make reasonably large amethyst, probably about 10 pieces of amethyst. Okay, so that's all mixed up. Now, what I want to do, you might notice it's got this funny indent. I don't want that in the bottom of my soap. So what I'm going to do is just fill that outside bit with some plain white soap, and I'll cut that off when we finish and get rid of it because I don't, I don't want it. So firstly, I'll just pour it all in until the base of my soap is pretty level. 
So again, try not to splash it up the side. You can use anything for a mould. You can use a silicon mould, a silicon cake pan. You can use a, a, a Chinese takeaway food container. But you don't want it to slop up the side because if it slops up the side, your colours will mix in a little bit. Okay, so remember before we said we don't want to keep things neat. We want them all rough. So I want you to pick up some of your crystals and, and, and what we're going to do, you know when we cut soaps apart, if we don't spritz it, they fall apart and the crystals will come out. We don't want that happening. So actually maybe I'll do it because it's alcohol if that's okay. Just don't breathe this in, yeah? Okay, give that a spritz and another little spritz. Okay. <laughs> don't breathe. Okay, and we're just going to toss that all through the, the white soap, yeah? Now I'll spritz and, and, and you toss a little bit more, okay? I'll do it over here so you're not breathing it. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, there you go, toss them in and I'll put a little bit more white soap so that they'll stick. There you go, toss them in all the bits, make it all rough cut all the way through, spritz on those bits, give them to me so you're not breathing it. There you go, spritz it on and I'll chop, chop them in for you. Now we have to poke them in. We want to get it really rough but we also want it to stick, we don't want it falling apart. That's good enough honey, that'll be fine, poke that in. Can I put these in? Yeah, uh, hang on, a little bit of spritz. There you go, poke them in. Ooh, yeah, got it on my Go hand. quick or your white soap will set. And you have to push them in at this stage because your soap started to set. Okay? <sighs> Careful, you're getting all that over. In. That's good enough. It's hot. Okay, all right. Now, let's have a look at what we've done. Thank you for your assistance with that. So, this is what the base now looks like. It, it's set enough so that it's not going to fall down. And you can see it's nice and rough cut. Do you need a sponge to wipe your fingers? Have you got soap on you or not really? Uh, it's a little bit there. You go. Yep, wipe it off. Great. Okay. Wipe it off the apron. That's what aprons are for, isn't it? Okay, so we've got our crystal base. Now, at the beginning of this video, or if, if you haven't had a chance to see it at the beginning, I've got a photograph that I took of an amethyst and I'll ask our editor to cut that in for you. Okay, so in the picture when you were looking at the amethyst, you might have noticed that the base of it looked a little bit like this. It's white and it's got crystals coming out of it. Then you may have noticed that it was a very pale purple, then slightly darker purple and then really dark purple. Now, amethyst doesn't always have inclusions. If it does, they're usually little flecks of black girthite, but if you wanted to add some interest at this point, you could add some of your mineral shimmer powders. So maybe some silver or maybe the... Um, copper or maybe even a little bit of the gold. So I'll, these are open so I don't want to tip them but I'll just tip them up a little bit so you can see those three colours. So you can decide which one of those colours you'd like to use. I think that today we'll go with the silver one and I'm also, I've got a scoop here of rock salt. So you're going to use a little bit of rock salt. It'll act as an exfoliant, but it'll give really fun sort of crystal structures through it. Now, in order to make that stick, we're going to need some more soap. So I'm going to take the clear soap, and we're finished with the white now, so that can kind of go over here. We're going to take the purple Renaissance pigment. I want to keep it really, really light purple at this stage. And it's good because you can just darken up as you go. So just two drops of the purple, you can mix it when it's, when it's set, it's, it's set now, we need to make it runny, okay? So we'll pop it back in the microwave and that can go, oh, and fragrance, we didn't fragrance it, let's put, yep, what did we do, oh, here it is, okay, there you go, put in some essential oil of lavender into here, that in a bit, until it smells nice. It's quite a lot, usually you'd use about six drops per, keep going, that's okay, you'd use about six drops uh, for one soap, but we're going to make ten soaps, so, you know, go for it. Well, that'll do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you want me to go for it? Yeah, that's fun. Alrighty, that's good. Let's melt that down. Put that on high. It's been melted, so it won't need much, perhaps 30 seconds on that one. Now, what we're going to do here is get a little paintbrush. Let's take this one. I'll get you making some more crystals in a minute, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of the silver powder and we're just kind of going to... Do you want to tap it? Yeah. 
course. Okay, just give it a little tap and it'll tap in there. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay. Cool. Yep. That's cool. And then it'll look like little girthite crystals throughout when we unmold it. Let's put a little bit, oh sorry, let's put a little bit in the corners. Because the thing is, with amethyst and with girthite in it, you tend to get those little black speckles and the little stars through it. Um, rather than a nice even colour. We'll even it out a little bit, but that gives you a few little flecks through your inclusions. That's looking good. Okay, let's have a look at our purple soap. I need a stirry stick. Here you go, mix it up. Go slow. Yeah. See how when you went fast, all the purple stuck on the side? So now you've lost a fair bit of your dye. That's it. Bring it in. Stir around. Now get your head out of the shop because it's me they're meant to be looking at. Mix it all through. Oh, I'm not joking, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> it's got big hard bits in it. That's good. So it smells strong enough, doesn't it? You can smell all of that lavender coming through, and it's just a really, really pale purple, which is what we're after. So let's have a look at that. Can you can you see through there or in there the sort of I don't know if you'll be able to get that in the camera, maybe from the side. Just a really, really pale purple. I'm going to pour it um, because you've got a really important job to do. I want you to scatter some rock salt in here as I pour it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, not with that because you'll get the whole lot. Use your fingers and, and I'm just going to pour a little bit and you're just kind of going to get like this and just kind of throw it in there as I pour a little bit of purple through. That way it'll it'll stick a little bit. Now, remember, we've got a set layer of soap and a runny layer, so we need to spritz it. Otherwise, we'll get a slip between the two. Yeah, don't breathe. Okay. It's cloudy. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the clear all over. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Throw it in. Yay. Keep going. Throw it all over. That's it. Get it mixed all over the thing. That looks good. Not too much in a lump, but just in spots all over. Now, in nature, you should keep going. Put a bit more okay. up there. In nature, usually we tip the mould. That'll do. Thank you. Because we don't want it to set straight. So what we want to do is, as that's going in, we want to tip it. Because we've got those crystals coming through, it's, it's nice and bumpy anyway. So we've got that effect taking place. We can probably have a little bit more rock salt in a lump. Now, what I want you to do is to make me some crystals. And this time, they're going to be nice big tall crystals. Okay, so I want you to make them about, about that tall big ones okay so shall I do one to show you how to do it yep you need to make them pointy they go like this right and they come up like this and then they go across and sometimes they have a flat bit there across the top they don't come like a triangle so what we can do if we want to cut this out is just cut this and cut down this side so we've got kind of a triangle shape but we want to get rid of the triangle so now we rotate it a little bit and just cut that angle and maybe just uh, Chop that bit off a little bit. Look, I've got a skinny one. I could, if it was a bit thicker, I could use it. Probably we don't need it quite that wide, but it won't matter. Let's just chop that bit off. And see how now we've got a sort of a crystal shape? Yep. That's perfect. Okay. So we can make it a little bit sharper if we want by cutting a point off. Okay, so that's a crystal. What we're going to do is we're going to make about uh, 10 or so of these. They can be that height, some can be half that height, some can be tall. Get crystal shaping, my dear. It doesn't matter, you can't do it wrong. You know, you really can't do it wrong. Just whatever they don't works. Look perfect nature. Yeah, but you can just... do one that height. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, and then what we're going to do is stick these all in here like crystals and then we're going to colour them up to make them purple. So we've got a really, really light purple in here over the clear. That's our first step. Now the next step while she's making us some crystals is that we want to make this slightly darker. So we had two drops last time. This time we're going to have three drops, maybe four drops, yeah? Okay. And I don't need to add any more lavender oil because it's quite strongly scented. So I'll just, it, it's still runny, but we'll just take the skin off that a little bit. Give it another 10 seconds. And I might just cut a few, she's made a few little chunky bits of pieces that are off cuts. Okay, so I'm going to put the good ones here. I'm just not used to this. It's That's weird. okay. Up a little bit while you're making the crystals. 
and we'll come back in a few minutes once we've got a pile of crystals made to share with you. Okay, did a good job with those. Bit of help. Good. So the only thing that I would correct you with a couple of them, see how that one has a really fine point? When we pour the soap over the top of that, it might melt. So let's just take the point off, like a top bit of a crystal. That's okay. Yeah. Let's see how that goes, okay? We'll see, we'll see what it comes out like. And we've got a few little ones. So this has melted now, which is our darker purple. So let's pour a little bit of the darker purple. Now it's starting to go flat. We don't want that. Breathe away the opposite direction, my friend. Okay, we're going to make some more chunks throughout here again. Thanks, Ian. You're good. Oh, okay. Right. Yep, and now we're going to wedge in our crystals in all these little places. Yep, poke one in. That's it. Poke it in. Good job. And... Try not to stick it in the, in the actual salt because if it goes straight in the salt it doesn't have a good base to hang on to and sometimes they come a bit loose okay. when you do that. Now if you get them right around the edges they're going to be a little bit hard for me to put, put another layer of soap in but we'll, we'll see how we go. Okay, there's a little bit of purple there. Those. We can do that, we can do a few more. There you go, stick one in there. That looks like Stonehenge now. What's that? You know that um, place in England with the sacred stones? Oh yeah. Looks like we need one there, but we can't. Uh, yep, we can spritz and we can just put a tiny bit of purple in there and poke that in there. Very cool. Now, if we want to make it really more interesting, you know what I reckon we could do? We could put a little bit of gold in there, but we might get it on the white amethyst. Um, I think it would look cool. Okay, let's try. Worth a try. Let's, worth a try. Okay. So let's get a bit of this. That's a bit messy anyway. Oh, that came out well. So we're just tapping the gold in here, but I'm trying not to get it on our amethyst crystals, but more just as inclusions throughout the amethyst itself. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> okay. It looks a bit like it's meant to be. Though. Yeah, it, it was. I did that on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to make our amethyst a little bit darker again because remember our amethyst crystal, see at the side, the camera might be able to have a close-up how it's going from white to purple and now we want to get a really dark purple. So this time I'm going to add about six. Oh, that's going to be dark. Yeah. And it's still soft so it won't take terribly long in here. So we'll put it in here for 20 seconds while I clean all my soapy fingers off. Oh, me too. Mm -hmm. And I'll just get the tea towel. It comes up easy because it's soap. Right. There you go. There you go. It's tea towel. Okay, so um, we could add a little bit more rock salt if we wanted to. That will give it a little bit more definition, a bit more colour. But I think that will be okay. So what we now want to do, if you looked at the amethyst, it doesn't have clear crystals coming out of it, it has purple crystals coming out of it. So now we somehow need to make our clear quartz points look purple. So we've got the darker colour in here. I'm going to mix it all They're up. They're actually reflecting so it looks slightly purple. But we want to make them really dark purple. Okay? Okay. All right. So now, what we're going to do is um, spritz again. Again. Okay. And now, we'll just try to cover each one of the amethyst crystal completely with the purple. Does it look cool? Yeah, it looks really great. So, we just want to make sure they're all coloured. Now, the top of our amethyst at this point is going to go flat. But it doesn't matter, because when we cut it, it's going to be all bumpy underneath, and that's what we're after. So you have to pour slowly, because if you pour it really quickly, your tub will fill up before your crystals are all covered with the purple. Have I got enough? Have I done enough? Maybe nearly quite one to go. Maybe just get them. Did I miss any? Let's no. rotate that. There's a clear one poking well, out. I can't see the gold. No, the gold's going to be inside, so where the gold's going to come into its own is when we chop it all open. It's going to be like a... Um, it looks great. A treasure hunt. How's that? You happy with that? Yeah. It looks amazing on the side. Okay, that'll be really fun to see when we chop it open. Okay. I don't think I want to wash myself with spikes. 
always a problem. Okay, so we're going to let that set up and we'll clean up a little bit and we'll come back and chop it all up. Okay, so it's ready to come out. Hey. Okay, it's not quite fully set. It's still slightly warm, but firm enough for us to be able to get it out. And sometimes that's a bit easier to cut when they're not really rock solid. So it's not like a silicon mould. It's not going to just pop out easily, but it should come out without too much trouble. Oh, we'll I don't just, think I would be able to do that. That's okay. We'll just release it all the way around. That's a big one. Yeah, just get an air bubble all the way around it. Push it all the way. And now we've got to get it to release off the bottom. funny bumpy bit on the bottom which we don't want but we'll cut that off a little bit later so there's our amethyst creation out of soap but now comes the interesting bit now we're going to cut it oh okay so what we want to do is go oh. down the middle of some of the crystals so we'll find a central crystal straight down the middle of your crystals chop through right the way to the bottom don't peek don't peek it looks amazing when you cut it no I'm teasing come back Come I back. want it Let's to be a surprise. Rough cut a few. Okay, should we do it? We'll make it a surprise. We just won't look until we chop it all up in different don't look, don't look pieces. Good. Okay. But you have to look. Yeah, I, I have to look because I looked away and cut one of the crystals off then, so that didn't work for me. Um, okay. I, 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 I won't look at the inside, okay? I'll just cut down mm. in rough chunks like this. I can't even see the inside, but it looks great. Okay, well, we'll see in a second, won't we? Oh, gosh, I hope it works well. This is the thing with these ones. You never really know until you cut them because you've got so many things in there that could look all sorts of different colours and shapes and shades. Okay, I think... I want to pick one up. Okay, go for it. Which one do you want to see? Oh, it looks great. <laughs> okay. So now let's turn them around and have a look at them. So we can see we've got our crystals in the bottom. We've got our points sticking out top. Maybe if we turn it this way. This one's quite big. I think we could probably cut him, if I'm careful, we could cut him down the middle of that crystal. Which is your favourite? Oh, I haven't had a look at them all yet. Give me a minute. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Oh, that one looks great. Now, see how that looks funny? We've got a lot of white at the bottom, but we don't need that. We cut it that big because of that indent. So, see, this one hasn't got so much. So if we chop that indent off, which we were talking about cutting off anyway, like that. Let's put that in our white soap. Now you see it's just got a thin layer That's of white. So we'll see if we can get a close-up on our amethyst crystal. We'll try this one and we can see how we've got the crystals, we've got the mineral inclusions in it and we've got the layers of purple and we've got the amethyst crystals coming out of it as well. It looks way better when you have slightly thinner white. Do you think? Yeah. All right, well let's, so. let's do it to all of them then. Let's yeah. chop them all off. But don't get all the white. No, we'll just, just chop that little bit off the edge and we'll reuse the white for something else. Is that better? That's much better. Do you like it like that? It looks more like an amethyst. Okay, so let's make a little, yeah, and look, that one's got a funny step on it because of our mould. We should have used a silicon mould. That would have okay. been easier, but it won't matter. Is that one good? Oh, look at that. You've got all the crystals and That's things inside of it. Is it? That one's your favourite? I'm going to cut off that. Okay. Okay, so we'll chop that bit off. And of course, with our melt and pour soap, there's no wastage. We'll just reuse those little bits. Oh, that one's pretty good. Look, that one wasn't quite spritzed enough. If you have a look there, see it's got a little bit where it's oh. coming out. Oh, we'll don't touch it. Poke it back in and it'll stick there. Let's make a whole row of I these. Love it. You like that one? Mm. I like that. That one. Look at this. So if you have a close-up of this one, you can see the white here, but you can see the clear crystal. This crunchy bit here is the salt that we put in, those bits that look That's like crystals. That's crunch when you cut it. Yep. And, well, let's cut this one. Yeah. It's, and if you put too much, it goes crunch Looks really like loudly. Looks like a birthday gift. Do you think? They would look really nice. So if you were going to sell these at a market, I would anticipate that once we package them up really nicely, you would get somewhere between $5 and $20 per slice of soap. Now, we didn't use a whole kilo. We probably used about 700 grams of soap. We've created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 
your cost factors on these are going to be about $1 per cake of soap. And I think they make really gorgeous gifts, but if you're wanting to make soaps to sell at the market, they look terrific with all the inclusions. If I hadn't made it myself, that would be a great birthday gift. For you? Yeah. If you mix up, thank you for all your help, if you mix up your colours, say you use blues and greens and a little bit of the red mineral shimmer powder through it, you'll create opal. If you create um, pinks, you might get rose quartz. So you can vary the crystals that you're making with the, um, with the different colours that you're using. So thank you for your help. That was fun. Are you going to take one home to use? Thanks. Thanks a lot. I love this. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.